Yeah. Okay. So today we're talk we're going to talk about the portable cords. Uh, portable cords, also known as simple extension cords, it's uh, they are the they are the things that you buy uh, some hardware lo your local hardware store, and you plug in uh, different things. Um, vacuum cleaner tv or whatnot now the port the uh, when it comes to the consumer level um basically what's in the store for the most part you can use on the regular consumer devices however when it comes to um, industrial environment uh, portable cords are not equal to each other right uh, how is it that they are not equal to each other well some of them are more equal than others <laughs> and we're going to talk about how uh, they classify now um the reason why you need to know this stuff is uh, if you are going to work as an electrician um you should know what cable you can use for what so you or other people don't get hurt or the property doesn't get damaged right? so there are certain uh, types of uh, classifications as far as the uh, uh, portable cords or extension cords are concerned um, all right okay so let's just start with some of the uh, some of the opening statements here a portable cord which is also known as a flexible cord what is it uh, it's a cable with multiple conductors used in applications requiring flexibility. So they are not uh, they are not part of the permanent installation. Uh, they are part of the temporary solutions most often, and and most often you will only be allowed to use portable cords for portable situations or temporary uh, situations. Okay, they are not meant to be a part of a permanent installation. Okay. Now, the cord can be used to provide power for a range of applications such as small hand tools, movable equipment, power extensions, or home appliances. And over here we have some examples of what those portable cords look like. Here is a regular yellow cord. <laughs> Um, that you can use to uh, most of the time on the construction sites when you need portability you can uh, you can run power to your hand drill or whatnot here is something as long well as a power bar uh, things that are you, you are excuse me are quite familiar with and here is another thing usually uh, you would run this thing to your Christmas tree lights all right um, and they are not equal to each other. How are they different? They might look similar, but uh, the physical characteristics might differ from each other based on the, um, the purpose of, uh, for which they are going to be used. Right? Just as a side note, uh, when you unplug the power cord or the power cord the portable cord here yeah, it is always good idea to uh, grab this plug here by its housing quite often people just grab the cable and they yank it out of the outlet what happens there because this is um, the portable cords they utilize stranded wires as opposed to solid wiring okay? sometimes a solid wiring is used for portable installations but there are specific situations like for example when um, 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 when there's a construction site and the lights are not on the construction site some of the portable installation uh, that runs along the ceiling might be used um, that utilizes the solid wires but but they're, they're kind of a specific niche you, you, you will see some of that stuff when you uh, when you go to work but for the most part the portable cords they utilize 
um, uh, stranded stranded uh, conductors because they provide better flexibility, of course. Right? Now uh, you should not be pulling those cables by the by the well, if you want to if you want to unplug those those should not be pulled by the cord in fact any of the cables that you plug and unplug they should not be pulled by the cable in order to unplug it what happens if you do that uh, well you are putting a lot of strain on the cord itself and it doesn't have a physical support it's not designed that way so when you pull on that cord over here pretty much most of the time somewhere along the way along the line right here where there's an interface between the uh, between the cord and the plug that spot becomes weaker and weaker which means what does it mean some of the strands might break off so as if you keep doing that you're going to keep breaking more and more those tiny strands that are inside the cable <coughs> and you're going to reduce the thickness of the or opacity of the wire what happens when you reduce the thickness or you're going to reduce the gauge of that um, okay uh, in the back the background noise there is uh, more than more than one session going on in this room so sometimes you're going to hear some other sessions uh, either teaching on or conference calls so uh, we just have to bear with that all right, it's an office environment, so I apologize for that, uh, but I guess life it is the way it is. <laughs> Anyways, so um, uh, what happens, we are going, if we keep pulling that, we're going to reduce the gauge of that wire, we're going to make that wire weaker. What happens if the gauge is reduced? Uh, well, the ampacity or the current carrying capability is also reduced. Uh, so the cable loses its specifications of how much current it should be carrying. When that happens, then the cable is going to heat, it's going to warm up here. So the, you're going to have a heat hot spot right there. Hot spot and then uh, you can actually cause a fire or uh, you, can, uh, you can damage the cord beyond uh, any kind of uh, usable uh, stage all right so whenever you unplug those be professional about it pull those cords by their housing of the plug okay all right uh, more we need some we need more view here all right uh, no i'm not at home i'm in the office environment here so there's more stuff going on uh, than just us. For the most part, we are okay. Yeah. All right. Portable cords might be used in commercial, industrial, or residential applications. All right. They work well on the job sites with resistance to, here it is, oil, chemicals, abrasion, which is the physical damage, is important. It is important for those cables to be resistant to the elements such as the you know oil or other chemicals water and so on dust all right um so uh the copper inside those cables is basically the same right uh the key uh to this whole idea is uh, what type of jacketing or insulation is being used to protect that copper that is inside the um uh, the jacketing, all right? Same as uh, with uh, uh, next term, when we're going to study the data cabling or signal cabling, uh, pretty much the specifications of those cables are also the same because the copper that is inside is basically copper and different classifications of those cables are also going to depend on the um, on the materials used to produce the jacketing. Okay. Uh, now, um, as far as portable cords, their construction enables them to perform, in, perform well in extreme environments, both heat and cold, outside or inside. Additionally, some of the portable cords can be weather resistant or weather submersible. Weather resistant is uh, when the cable gets wet. Uh, nothing should happen occasionally wet so nothing should happen to it 
uh, whether submersible is, um, well, if uh, it is submerged in the water for a longer period of time, it should not be damaged and it should be just fine. Uh, all right, now here is, and uh, here are some colorful pictures <laughs> all right. of the or dif of different type of, uh, well, here's the jacket thing, so you can see the copper inside. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but trust me, the copper inside is the same, but uh, but the, uh, there are different cables that are being used for different purposes, and the copper is just the same, and sometimes you're going to have... Uh, uh, Print right on the jacket thing uh, that uh, talks about the specifications, and we'll talk about those uh, in the next couple of slides here. Now, here is portable coils designations. Designations means markings. Okay. All right, common types include SJT, SVT, SEOW, SJ, SJOW, SO, and SOW. <laughs> right, now, su now suppressed by the SOOW. So, okay, so do you know more now? And there is that fly that <laughs> keeps flying around here. It's trying to uh, uh, dance on my face. <laughs> right. I didn't get it. I'll get it. All right. So now, um, uh, S O O W. And we'll talk about what those letters mean. I just thought I would uh, just, uh, you know, spill those out uh, because I thought that would be funny. Anyways, S O O W and S E O O W. All right. Uh, now, when we go forward with the slides, and if you go back later on when you download and read, it's all gonna make sense. So S O O W it uh, uses uh, rubber. Um, S O S E O O W. You would use thermoplastic PVC. What's a thermoplastic PVC? A thermoplastic PVC is. Uh, type of uh, material that once you heat it up and cool it down and heat it up and cool it down multiple times it is not going to lose its physical properties because some materials once you heat them up and then it, when they once they cool down they become a different material right? uh, now thermoplastics uh, are materials that are not going to use their elasticity and flexibility and other physical properties they're just going to be just the same and when they are heated up and cooled down multiple times all right so uh soow and seoow uh some of them are using these guys are using rubber for jacketing and these guys are using uh, P, uh thermoplastic uh, pvc they, they're supposed to be durable uh, greater dielectric strength. Okay, they, they should have certain dielectric strength. What is a dielectric? A dielectric is an insulator, right? as opposed to a conductor. A conductor is a thing that conducts or is able to conduct electricity. An insulator is something, is it something that is not able to conduct electricity? Well, you can say it that way. Or you can just say that it's able to insulate or it's able to resist electricity. So dielectric is an insulator, something that prevents electricity from flowing. And sometimes we want to use one thing and sometimes we want to use the other. Uh, all right. <laughs> Are those acronyms? Uh, uh, no. Yes, technically or no. Once we get to the next couple of slides, you, you see what that, these are uh, so-called designate, designations, okay? Uh, which means the markings, all right? Maximum continuous temperature would be 90 degrees Celsius and maximum continuous uh, temperature or minimum, minimum continuous would be minus 40. So that's a pretty, pretty, uh, um, pretty big range. We humans would not be able to survive 90 degrees Celsius and we humans uh, are not designed to withstand minus 40 degrees Celsius unless you are dressed well. So I suppose we could survive that temperature better than positive 90 degrees Celsius because water boils at 100 
A um, few years ago, I was in Saskatchewan, North Battleford. Uh, I was sent to a, a wire up a store. Uh, and uh, it was just before Christmas time. And uh, the car that they have rented for us, uh, they had a thermometer on a display. And once I saw there was minus 40 degrees Celsius, so I had actually took a picture of the dashboard. Uh, well, you can't breathe fast when you go outside. Right? <laughs> With those temperatures. Right? Uh, so, uh, well, you know, but the thing is that uh, if, if, if you get outside and you're cold, you're going to react to it uh, so you don't get damaged. So you're going to go inside or put more clothes or whatnot. The cable doesn't speak. The cable just is. And it's not going to complain. It's just going to get damaged and stop working. Yeah. So there are those uh, specifications. Now... All right. Here are those designations. Right? What do they mean? Now let's see, we just we looked at those, let's say SJT or SEOW and so on. Well, here are those letters. Right? What does okay, so when you see the S, that means it's a severe service cord. Right? It is supposed to handle 600 volts. Also, it's supposed to handle, it's also good for 277 or 480 volts or 480 volts if it's specified that way. Of course, it goes down, it's down or if it's, if it's able to handle 600 volts, it should be able to handle 277 volts, all right? Um, now, might be utilized in place of SJ. So you can... Instead of SJ, you could put S cable. What's the difference? Well, mm -hmm. SJ stands for Junior Severe Service. And it is specified up to 300 volts. And also 120 or 12208 or blah, blah, blah. Here, you can just read that, all those. But not 277 and 480. Okay. Now... It's just the way it is. Yes, it's up to 300 volts, but not those. Because 277, 480, that 480 is more than 300. So you can't use that cord in, the, in that situation here. So, of course, the severe service cord is tougher. And severe junior service, junior service. So uh, severe service and severe service junior just a you know, little guy here right? uh, it is supposed to, it's designed for those voltages so if you don't have junior cable you can use the severe service because it is supposed to handle more but you cannot use that one instead of this one you cannot use junior instead of severe all right, uh, now the designation that stands, uh, that says T equal, uh, that it's basically, that means that the cable is, is thermoplastic. And as, uh, as, as we talked about uh, a few seconds ago, thermoplastic is a property that uh, uh, makes the material not lose its physical specifications once it's, um, uh, once, uh, it's exposed to heat and cold multiple times, right? Uh, now, H says for heat resistance, and HH stands for high heat resistance. And the temperatures vary depending on specifications, so they are not listed here. N stands for nylon outer jacket material, all right? E, elastomer, uh, elastomer. Well, so uh, what's elastomer? Well, it's a thermoplastic material that looks and feels like rubber. Okay. Uh, then we have the O and we have the double O. Okay. They are oil resistant cables. And those most of the time would be, the most common use would be uh, in uh, well, car shops, mechanics, and everywhere that they uh, in pretty much old industrial uh, environment that uh, you're always going to have some oils on the ground on the on the walls and uh, whatnot you just can't escape that so 
in that case, in this in heavy industrial environment, you need a cable that does have the O or the double O, all right? So the O stands for oil resistance outer jacket. And the double O, it's double old, okay? It's an oil resistance outer jacket and also oil resistance insulation that is inside the jacket right so the um so there's the, the the jacket that binds the whole cable with all the conductors in it plus all the conductors jacketing is also supposed to be oil resistant sometimes it is enough to use just the o and sometimes when it's a heavier environment uh, it is necessary to have the double o of course double o is better no, you should not memorize these. Uh, I'm not going to expect you to memorize. Here's the uh, here's the thing about this one, uh, or most of the stuff that I'm I'm giving you. Um, I'm giving you the information that you know. Uh, you're supposed to know that something like that exists. Now, if you get, uh, if you find yourself in a situation that you're working with these type of uh, variables or this type of ideas constantly, then whether you want it or not, it is going to embed itself into your memory. So you're going to memorize it uh, by default, right? It's going to happen all by itself. I just, for, for me, the more important thing is that, uh, that you understand the concept and the idea, or just if somebody need, somebody asks you to apply certain portable cord to a certain machinery, then you're not just going to go to some hardware store and buy any cord. You're going to know that you're supposed to do at least a little bit of research in order to apply the proper cord. Okay. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to ask you to memorize those. Okay? Uh, so V, there's another one as V, a vacuum. It's a vacuum, right? So typically used with the vacuum cleaners and other portable cleaning equipment that has to do with uh, the elasticity of it um, and also it has to do with being exposed to different cleaning chemicals right so when you see that you can use this on vacuum and other cleaning equipment um, so when it when the cable is exposed to chemicals it is not going to lose its integrity and it's not going to um, um, cause any trouble as far as somebody getting hurt or the machinery getting uh, machinery not be not all uh, not being able to work right? um, as far as elasticity or sort of a twist resistant thing if you just uh, uh, if you can just imagine uh, if you're using your vacuum cleaner at home how do you um, coil how do you wind the cable? It's just take it on top of the vacuum cleaner. It's just one of those. And after a couple of years, you're going to have like a squirrely type of a cable. There's a certain way of, of coiling cables. And perhaps maybe next time I'm going to show you how to properly coil the cables so they are not going to get twisted. Because if you twist them too much, they're going to memorize that twist. And they're just going to look like a squirrely, wiggly kind of a thingy. And it's not good. It's not good for you, it's not good for the cable. Uh, now, W or CSA weather and water resistant approved for indoor and outdoor use. Uh, well, not all the cables uh, or not all the jacket things are going are, are um, des designated. They're designed to work with uh, uh, being outside. Right? Um, there's a common thing that it's a UV rated um, uh, coaxial cable. It's just basically the cable uh, that you use for the cable internet. That's you know, used to be used for cable TV, but you know, uh, times are changing. Uh, sometimes they have that uh, U letter uh, with the designation of what type of a cable is, and then there's that U. If you have that U thing there, that means it's UV rated, um, and then um, uh, you can have that thing installed outside, exposed to the element, hot, cold, and the ultraviolet rays that are emitted from the sun. If you don't have UV rated cable, 
uh, within a few months, that jacket thing is going to become dry and crackly. And if you touch it, it's just going to disintegrate. Okay. Uh, so uh, it is important that uh, if you are using cables that are supposed to be outside, they should have the jacket thing that is the UV resistance or weather resistance. Also, we're going to uh, talk about later on when it comes to uh, optical fiber installations. Um, uh, a lot of the um, cables that are outside, they are really, really made out of a tough material. Inside that also is even tougher material and so on and so on. You can pretty much step on that thing. Nothing is going to happen to that fragile piece of glass that is just basically like a human hair thickness. But we're talking about the portable cords right now. All right. Now, here's a designation. Example of the designations here. Understanding the cable types. What does the label SJEOOW mean? All right. So sometimes you're going to see label like this on a cable. All right. Uh, well, here is the S. So that means it's a severe uh, service cable. Service is providing power as opposed to a microphone signal or audio signal. So it's a ser service cable. It's a severe service cable. Now, if it was just the S, then you would have, you would be rated for 600 volts. But it does have that J beside it. So that means it's a junior service cable, which means it is designated to up to 300 volts. Right? That's how we read those. Will this be on the test? Yeah, but uh, as far as uh, the tests that I'm giving, they are online tests and they're open book tests. And if you think that these are easy, think again after you write my first test. All right. And all the questions are always different. So don't even bother looking for some answers on the internet. All right. Because I, every test and quiz, I make a new one every time. So nobody had that before. You're going to have those questions. Plus, they are differently arranged. So everybody gets a different test. Uh, as I said, I want you to know the concept. I'll give you all the information, open book, and I'll ask you some questions. And the difficulty level is going to be adjusted to the open book test. So you will have to know where to look for things and what to look for. Okay? which is going to be no different as when you go to work. Uh, however, if you get some basic ideas and basic concepts, uh, um, not memorized, but understood, then you should have those as well, right? without having to look at the book, into the book. Right? Um, like for example, don't uh, you know? Don't grab a live wire with your eye, you know, with your hands, okay? Because you might get hurt. You don't need to look in the book, all right? Now it's just a very simplistic example, but uh, things like that, right? Uh, now, uh, what else do we have here? We have the E, or sometimes it's it's, it's used with the TPE, all right? So that the E thing here stands for it's a thermoplastic polymer. Polymer is a type of plastic, okay? Um, it's, it's artificial, um, artificial material, right? man-made material. Uh, so thermoplastic. So we know that when this cable is exposed to extreme heat and cold, uh, then it is not going to lose its properties. It's going to stay within its integrity. Right? It's going to not change. Yeah? Uh, so. Um, uh, that's what that E stands for. Now, we have the... All right, okay, this is ridiculous. Close to the guy in the background. Yeah, I know. I know. It is the beauty of the online teaching, isn't it? Right? Yeah, okay. So, um, okay, you know what? Let me just adjust something here. Audio settings. I'm going to go into a high... All right high noise reduction level is this better right now because now uh, i should hear me better and the background noise is going to be a little bit reduced um see if that home all right cool <laughs> i'm learning something as well all right um 
it's just when I don't have that uh, the music that I'm playing for you in the background, it just sounds weird, all right? But now uh, this is uh, this is better for this purpose. Uh, I just learned something as well. All right, so now we have the um, uh, the O. We have two O's, all right? If we just had one O, it would be just an oil resistant jacket, all right? But now we have the two O's, so you know that this cable is uh, has the oil resistant jacket and the insulation inside. All right. uh, then uh, we have that W thing here, uh, so that means this thing is a weather resistant cable. Right? So that means it can be done, it can be installed outside. All right. Now, so these labels here, those designations, and this is just an example of, of a certain type of a cable that you can see this thing on the cable. So based on that, you could tell what the cable is good for. All right? Or uh, sometimes you're going to see things like this specified on the machinery that you're going to connect. Or well, the difference between the vacuum cleaner that you buy in the hardware store and the machine that arrives in some factory or a plant is that the vacuum cleaner you unbox it and you plug it into the wall and press the on button it is supposed to work uh, it is designed so the person that who is using it is not it's not required to have any knowledge of electricity right? that's the consumer type of um, equipment now when it comes to the industrial equipment, it doesn't have, you just don't unbox it um, and you have find the cord and you just undo the squirrely thingy there, you know, the twisty thingy and you plug it into the wall. It just doesn't work that way. It uh, requires some more complicated hookup and connections. And sometimes you're going to see that on the machinery that is going, you're going to be connecting. Like for example, you're going to see that and you're going to say that this type of equipment requires this type of a uh, cable, cabling to be installed with it. Or you're going to find yourself in an environment that you're going to have the machinery installed in. So not only you have to pay attention to what the machine requires, you're also going to pay attention to what the environment requires, all right? So that's, that's why we have those, uh, those designations, okay? Now, is that the last slide? Yes, this is the last slide. So here is a little um, homework here for you. Um, and I encourage you to do this. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to do a little bit of a statement here. Do you have to do this? No, you don't have to do this. In fact, you don't have to do anything. You can sit in your basement and smoke pot. And you can do that too. But what are you going to get out of this? All right, so here's my motivational, inspirational speech. But if you want to do something with your life, I would encourage you to do anything that anybody throws at you because there's a reason we're giving you the, that information. Can you do both? Uh, no, but some people have tried and they were not <laughs> very successful, all right? So um, um, I encourage you to, like, for example, if I'm going to give you this, um, this sort of homework here, and I'm not going to make, I, I could make a quiz and make you do it. I don't want to make you do things. I want you to do this thing out of your own because it is useful for you. Why? Because you're going to, one day you're going to leave this college and you're going to close the door for one last time and you're going to find yourself facing the world and how good you're going to be in any situation that you're going to find yourself and how good of a job can you do. And once you find that job, what is going to be the natural hierarchy in that job? What I mean by that is, are you going to be the one that people will give the tasks that actually matter and they're going to give you some responsibility? Of course, that's going to come with the money, better money. Or are you going to be the person who is carrying somebody else's tools, all right? So that's why I am, uh, you know, good. so just take a look at that. You can, it is in the posted lecture notes, all right? Yeah, holding, <laughs> holding the flashlight, right? Well, 
hold my beer if I almost last words, never mind. Uh, so, um, uh, okay, so using this chart below or above, the, uh, see here, okay, so we have, we have this thing in two places. Um, see if you can find out what kind of a cable it is when you have these one, two, three, and four four designations. Do you mind going to the last slide and telling us, um, telling what it says beside the W box? Here, W, CSA Wetter, CSA, Canadian Standard Association, Canadian, sorry, Canadian Safety Association, Wetter, and water resistant approved for indoor and outdoor use. Okay. One here. Here is. Yeah. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so that's a weather resistant and it has a little kind of a number two in it because um, some of the designations have changed over the years. So let's see what the number two says. Um, okay, so there would be, uh, let's see here, is, there is the, uh, uh, the year, 19, year 1998, so uh, that's like a few years back, all right, um, sometimes you would see those, uh, those labels here instead of the W, so you would just have WA instead of the W, all right, so that's basically what, what you can see right now. But sometimes on some of the older equipment, you're going to see WA. And if you read all the other ones too, in Canada, E becomes T, all right? So sometimes you're going to see the T instead of E. See that here? Because we have American standards and Canadian standards. Uh, and that's the two most common ones we're going to study. However, in Europe and other countries, uh, you might have to familiarize yourself with uh, the designations that might be slightly different than the American ones, or maybe some of them are going to be the same, right? But always, you have to always verify the local rules and regulations when you're working with things, right? You're welcome, all right? Uh, so, um, here, you have three, no, four type of cables, S-E-O-W, S-O-O-W, THHN and THW. Yeah. Sit down, have a good coffee, and um, come up with the idea of what is the cable supposed to be. All right. So that's pretty much the last slide for today. Looks like the labs are going well. Um, I think you have the idea right now. Um, what this specific course is all about right now. Basically, in short, if I want to use a metaphor, uh, my job with you guys is to, metaphorically speaking, I am telling you that the bells are ringing, okay? And I'm going to make sure that you hear that the bells are ringing. And the next guy that I'm going to hang you over to is going to tell you which church the bells are ringing at, okay? <laughs> or the other thing is, you know, I'm telling you that something squeaks in the grass and I'm going to tune your ears to listening to that and the next guy is going to tell you what it is actually that squeaks in the grass. All right, what do you mean by the bells are ringing? Yeah, so basically I'm setting you up with the correct habits and some basic knowledge that you can expand on when you go to, the, to your next course uh, during the next term. If you don't have that knowledge that I give you, it's going to be tough for you, uh, when, you uh, as, when you move along. Uh, so um, yeah, there you go. All right. Cool, so um, let's just take a quick look at uh, some, of the, some of our scheduling here. Uh, course plan. Where do we have the course plan? Uh, schedules. Uh, let me just download the course plan here. Course outline. 
that's our roadmap for our course. Here it is. We are during week three right now. Yeah. All right, so as far as theory, no, you don't see it here, okay. Uh, we are uh, in our the uh, week three right now. So lecture 2A into B, whatever, some of those might change, but the topics are, so we have the cables and wire ties, service conductors and portable cables. So we have that and we're continuing with lab one. Next week, I'm going to give you the online quiz and that quiz is going to be worth 5% of this whole course. Even though it is worth only 5% of this course, again, I encourage you to do well on that quiz because those questions from that quiz in maybe slightly different form are also going to be asked on the test, which is worth much more. And if you don't get that during the quiz, you're going to do poorly on the test. So you're going to lose much more uh, than just 5% of this whole course and the whole thing adds up. And what's even more important, is that you're going to leave our college and you're not going to possess the necessary knowledge to be someone who is not carrying tools for somebody else or holding their flashlight, all right? Okay, so uh, this is as far as uh, uh, today's, uh, today's lesson in class lab for section one tomorrow. Let's just uh, take a quick look at the course uh, or the... Um, um, Uh, I might have this thing here. Lab timetable, there we go. All right, so tomorrow is September 24th. All right, so September 24th, Friday, Mr. Cunningham, and you're going to have section one lab from five to 7 p.m. Is there anything else on Friday? Nope, it's just section one tomorrow okay so i think you're getting the um you're getting the hang of the schedule i suppose right of, of how to read that okay now um yeah no problem uh so uh i think it was benjamin who was asking about that hard hard thing and i'm sorry i was just well, not able to uh you know and uh, you know um uh, let you in because you know, i just can't you know um, so you might contact Mr. Cunningham to see if he's going to let you in uh, tomorrow for his class. So this way you can just catch up with lab, uh, lab one. All right. Cool. All right. Um, okay. So that's pretty much it for today. And um, I will see you guys whenever I uh, absolutely have to see you. Just kidding. I love you and you're special. But for now, goodbye. <laughs>